Welcome to the Collaborative. What's been done? What's the con conference call? My name is Adrienne, and I'll be your operator for today's call. At this time, all participants are in a listen-only mode. Later, we'll conduct a question-answer session. I'll now turn the call over to Emily Nelson. Emily Nelson, you may begin. Thank you. Hello, everyone. This is Emily Nelson with Metastar, the Wisconsin organization that is part of the Lake Superior Quality Innovation Network, or Lake Superior Clin. Lake Superior Clin represents Minnesota, Michigan, and Wisconsin under Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services Quality Improvement Organization Program. I would like to welcome you to this educational session entitled The Collaborative, What's Been Done, What's to Come. All lines will be muted during this webinar. However, after the presentation, we'll have time for a question and answer. So please make note of any questions that may come up as you listen or place your question in chat. The objectives of today's webinar are to identify outcomes of nursing homes participating in the National Nursing Home Quality Care Collaborative to identify strategies that a nursing home use to improve their quality measures, and also to share upcoming events. Please remember to access and use the change package. The change package is a curated collection of great ideas and practices to create lasting change in your nursing home. This guide is found on the Lake Superior Clin webpage, www.lsqin.org. Now let's go over some of the great accomplishments that we have made together through our quality improvement work efforts. From the beginning of this work in 2014, we are very fortunate to have many nursing homes in Michigan, Minnesota, and Wisconsin participating in our quality improvement network. In Michigan, 64% of all nursing homes in the state are participating. In Minnesota, 74%, and in Wisconsin, 77% of nursing homes are participating. This slide shows the vast impact that our collaboration has. In total, our commitment to improvement could affect 76,648 residents residing in our participating nursing homes. One of the foundational pieces of our quality improvement work is promoting the use of the QAPI, or Quality Assurance and Performance Improvement Assessment. As many of you know, this program became part of the updated conditions of participation this fall. A great way to get a baseline of where your organization stands is to complete the QAPI self-assessment. There are several tools to complete this assessment, as well as the QAPI plan on the Lake Superior Quinn webpage. Please visit the link below. Once completed, please inform your state QIO contact of your overall status in QAPI. Contact information is located at the end of this presentation. We know that many of you are already using QAPI principles in your work. In fact, each state from the LSQIN collected information regarding your status with overall QAPI program in your organization. In Michigan, 165 participating homes informed the QIO that they had completed the QAPI self-assessment. 230 homes in Minnesota and 262 homes in Wisconsin informed the QIO that they had completed the QAPI self-assessment. Our goal in this next phase of our work is that all participating homes complete the QAPI self-assessment. Now let's, let's take some time to look at our progress through data, starting with the composite score. The composite score is comprised of 13 long-stay quality measures and is used to show each nursing home's progress. A lower composite score is desired. Here's an example of a composite score report that is sent to all participating nursing homes. You can see from this report that the participant is able to see progress from a high level as well as compare their score from the scores of other participants or other nursing facilities in their state. The table at the bottom of this report shows a breakdown of rates for the 13 contributing quality measures. We are thrilled that in Michigan, 111 nursing homes have reached a composite score of 6.0 or less. In Minnesota, 92 nursing homes have met this goal, while in Wisconsin, 152 homes have reached a composite score of 6.0 or less. Let's take a moment to see how many of you are aware of the composite score. Emily, could you please display the first polling question?
Please answer the question, are you aware of your nursing home's composite score? Looks like we have about 15 minutes or 15 seconds left on that. And I'm not seeing any results, but that's okay. There could be some sort of technical issue with that polling question. Um, we'll move on with the presentation. Again, also related to composite scores, if you do have questions regarding um, what is comprised of a composite score, please contact your state QIO contact. We now have the results of the polling question. Oh, yep, so we do have some results. So it looks like almost half and half, 33 say yes, we're aware of the composite score, and 38 um, say no, well, 22 did not answer. So thank you so much for that information. Next, we'd like to highlight two quality measures in each state for which there's much improvement. As you can see on this slide, the Michigan nursing homes participating in the National Nursing Home Quality Care Collaborative are showing great progress in the long stay percent of residents with pressure injuries quality measure. In fact, they have made 13.07% improvement, while non-participating homes have re regressed in this QM by 9.74%. In addition, Michigan nursing home participants are showing vast improvement in the QM for percentage of residents who lose too much weight. Michigan nursing homes participating in this quality improvement work have improved by 12.2%, while those not participating have improved by only 5.68%. As you can see on this slide, the nursing homes participating in Minnesota are showing great progress in the long stay percent of residents with a urinary tract infection quality measure. In fact, they have made 15.49% improvement, while non-participating homes have improved, improved in this quality measure by only 3.92%. In addition, Minnesota nursing home participants are showing improvement in the quality measure for percentage of residents who lose too much weight. Minnesota nursing homes participating in this quality improvement work have, have improved by 13.74%, while those not participating have improved by only 1.31%. Wisconsin nursing homes participating in the National Nursing Home Quality Care Collaborative are showing great progress in the long stay for some of residents who have had a catheter inserted and left in their bladder QM. They have made 4.16% improvement, while non-participating homes have regressed in this QM by 8.21%. In addition, Wisconsin nursing homes participating are showing improvement in the QM for percentage of residents whose needs for help with ADLs has increased. Wisconsin nursing homes participating in this QM work have improved by 7.29%, while those not participating have improved by less than 1%. This slide is extremely powerful. As you can see, each of the Lake Superior Quinn States, Michigan, Minnesota, and Wisconsin are in the top 10 national rankings for low, inappropriate, antipsychotic medication use. Michigan is leading the way at number 7, Wisconsin at number 8, and Minnesota at number 10. Thank you for your commitment to this significant national initiative. As many of you are aware, the Lake Superior Quinn, along with others in the nation, started a C. difficile reduction project this past summer. This project centers around preventing, reporting, and reducing C. difficile infections in nursing homes. Participants of this project were able to secure access to the CDC's database, the National Healthcare Safety Network, where they are able to enter facility-acquired C. diff infections. In addition to the guidance provided to the participants of the C. diff initiative project, all National Nursing Home Quality Care Collaborative participants will have the opportunity to receive antimicrobial stewardship training. Like I mentioned, each state in the LSQIN started participating into this project starting in May of 2016. Michigan has 91 nursing homes participating, Minnesota has 72, and Wisconsin 81. We look forward to continued efforts in prevention of C. difficile infections as we continue through this project. 
One of our newest resources provided to participants is 30-day readmission data. This data report is based off Medicare fee-for-service claims. The readmission rates contained in the provided report are all cause acute care readmissions for patients discharged to your nursing home from hospital. This particular slide above shows readmissions to any hospital represented by the blue line and readmissions to the same hospital discharge represented by the gray line. The green line represents the state readmission rate. The link that's currently in the chat box is a short video describing these reports. The video is also housed on the Lake Superior Quinn webpage. Please view this video at your convenience. State readmission rates are calculated using all nursing homes in each state, not just those who are participating in the National Nursing Home Quality Care Collaborative. As this slide states, based on Medicare fee-for-service claims from 7-1-15 to 6-30-16, Michigan has a readmission rate of 21.2, Minnesota has a rate of 17.5, and Wisconsin has a readmission rate of 17.3. This new data resource also breaks down the data into population segments, including primary diagnoses. In each of our three states, congestive heart failure is the top primary diagnosis for the index hospital stay. Other population segments described in the provided reports include race, age, gender, length of index hospital admission, number of hospital admissions in the prior six months, and high-risk medications. We hope that you find these reports useful and welcome any feedback. At this time, I will turn the webinar, webinar over to Christy Wergeen, who leads the nursing home work for Stratus Health in Minnesota. Thank you very much, Emily. Um, hopefully, let's see, I'm just going to move the slide here. Great. Okay, hopefully all of you are tracking your quality measures. Your quality measure rates are a component used to calculate your five-star rating, as well as helping you recognize areas that need improvement in your nursing home. As Emily mentioned, your composite score, which we send out to you each quarter, is calculated from 13 long-stay quality measures. Since it is calculated as an average of all the 13 quality measures in the composite score, it would suggest that if you have a good, if you have really good quality improvement systems in place, then your composite score will be low. And remember, lower is better. In Minnesota, the nursing homes with the current lowest composite score is West Wind Village. And we are pleased to have Sean Kidd from West Wind Village with us today to help us understand what QI processes they have in place that account for their exemplary quality measure performance. Thank you, Sean, for sharing with us. I will turn the presentation over to you. Okay, first off, thanks for inviting us to participate today. Um, as you see, there's a picture of us up there. That's a picture of our group. Um, we have a team that works on this daily, and um, it's definitely a team effort, even though I was elected to speak. Um, they're all in here helping me. So if you want to go to the next slide, or back one. I think you went two. Thank you. Um, Westland Village over here in Morris, we're in rural Minnesota, we're an 80-bed nursing home. We have three units, it's kind of a mix of long and short stay residents together. Um, we have a 13-bed dementia care unit as well. We're part of St. Francis um, Health Services. They own several um, homes in Minnesota. Um, when we started looking at our quality measures a few years ago, we looked at um, the CMS reports and and stuff, and that kind of showed us what was already done three months prior. So we started to take more of a proactive approach, um, which if you want to go to the next slide. So proactively, we have something we use, Optimus software, and we have something in the software called Electronic Control Center, and it monitors stuff. We look at it daily. Every morning when we come in, we pop it up and we look at everything um, to see what changed from the day before. And we look at incidents, all the quality indicators, if there's any incomplete data. 
So every day we're on top of that to see if something changed from the day before. Another thing we do is about six to eight weeks before someone is due for um, their next MDS, before they come into their ARD date, we print out the MDS from the last time, and then I go through and highlight the things that we're kind of watching, ADLs, behaviors, depending on, um, you know, what the focus is for that resident. So we do that six to eight weeks out. And then we also um, look like if, if we notice that they're having more issues with ADLs, we'll get therapy involved that far out. We'll send out, um, you know, uh, a request to have therapy look at them so that we can get them kind of um, fixed, more or less, before their MDS is due again. We do um, quality measure audits, which is when I first started, the QI nurses at St. Francis came up with a form called the quality measure audit, and it lists all the quality measures, and it talks about um, what is um, the triggers, the MDS triggers, the exclusions, so that we can look at it and make sure the important thing is that the MDS is accurate, you know, so if someone is excluded, we're able to use that, you know, so that it doesn't trigger. But then it also has a whole bunch of questions just to make sure that we're doing everything we can um, to improve that um, trigger before the next time the um, MDS is due. So they created that, and we, and we use that. I use that a lot at first, but now then after a while, the, the questions are kind of, you just remember what they are, so I don't actually use the form. But um, every day, like I said, we look at the electronic control center, and the unit managers come in my office, and we meet and talk about all the residents that we have concerns with or that we've noticed a change. And we usually do that over lunch. My office is pretty big because I do the nursing assistant training, so there's lots of room in here. So we do that every day. Oh, I'm forgetting to tell you to advance the screen. If you can advance the next one. There we go. Sorry about that. So every day the nurse managers meet, like I was saying, and then um, the MDS nurse, she when she goes over the MDS, if she notices charting, like if we know that a resident is total assist and um, there's a new staff member or someone that maybe charted limited or something, um, she will either go directly to the um, the staff member and, and educate them on the correct way to um, chart that or else we use OMAIL a lot. It's an internal email system on Optimus. We use that a lot for education and for um, notifying the caregivers of what's going on. Another thing we do is therapy um, meets with her every week and they kind of go over um, everybody that's on therapy to make sure that they're on track there. And therapy gives us a caregiver information sheet when they change anything, so that's one way that we communicate that to our staff, too, if there's any changes. Um, Activities does uh, what we call the Guardian Angel Program, and it's a list of the questions that survey asks of the residents when they come. Um, is, that, is that for the resident satisfaction, or do they do that on the regular survey, Jody? on the regular survey. So it's just questions about if their room is warm, if the staff is friendly. Um, those questions, the activities ask them every quarter. Every resident gets asked those questions so that we can, you know, make sure that we're keeping up with what they want us to do. And then when we're in our window, they actually go out and do them monthly so that we can, um, you know, make sure that, you know, we're doing everything that the resident wants us to do. And then there's also the um, electronic record has a 24-hour report that we look at daily, too, that tells us if there's any changes in the last 24 hours, like if there's an increase in pain or um, if somebody was incontinent that was never incontinent before, um, just changes in a 24-hour thing so we can keep up on it. I think that's the most important thing is that we're really, really proactive and we don't wait for something to get really bad. We try and keep an eye on it so that we can jump on it and, and um, take care of it before it becomes an issue. If you go to the next slide. So when we started this, um, the first thing that we started with was reducing antipsychotic meds, and all the doctors in our area were really on board with that. So before someone even comes in or as soon as they get to the building, we ask to have that decreased and then de-seed, and we, they're 
really good about helping us do that. So our antipsychotic use is really low because of that, because we have, you know, that help with them. Um, like I said, we use O-mail a lot, um, that internal email, um, to let the, the staff know what we're doing. We also use something called a stop and watch form, and it's from Interact. I don't know if anyone uses that, but it's a really, really effective form. We were in a care transition grant a few years ago and got involved with Interact, and that's where we got this form from. And we hand it out, and the staff uses it, the frontline staff, whenever they see anything different with the resident at all. They're encouraged to fill that out and give it to the team leader, and then a copy goes to the unit manager and one to myself so that we can um, get on track of it. And that was the number one way to prevent hospitalizations was using that stop and watch form. And I did go on right before this presentation and look, and if you just Google Interact Stop and Watch form, you can download it. So they must have okayed it for everyone to use. But if you go and look at that, um, it just spells out Stop and Watch and, and just anything that's different. The Because the frontline staff is the one that notices changes before we would. So they fill that out, and then it goes to the unit managers, like I said, and one to myself. And then what I do is when we figure out what's going on with the stop and watch or if we send them to the doctor or we make a med change or whatever we do, I will email the staff that sent the stop and watch and thank them for noticing that and, and you know, bringing it to our attention. And then I tell them what we've done, you know, for that so that they know that their concerns are um, valid and that we appreciate them and that we, um, you know, take um, charge of it right away, and then go to the next slide. Oh, no. Oh, sorry. I forgot to talk about the follow-up calls. So if you can go back a slide. Sorry about that. When a resident is discharged, the unit managers all make follow-up calls, and they do it, um, they do three of them, on day two or three, on day 14, and then on day 28. And they call to check to make sure that they're taking their meds right if they have any questions, make sure that they're still doing okay um, and that they don't need to uh, see the doctor. We added the day 28 after we were at the, um, the – was that leading age we were at? In the cities where we met with one group, and that's what they do. They call it day 28, and it kind of helps um, prevent them from being rehospitalized at 30 days, you know, because we can – call the doctor for them and get something if they have any questions. Now you can go to the next slide. So for staff training, what we do is every year we have a skills fair in July, and we have different stations set up, and they're informative, but they also, um, we go over skills if we think that there's something that, um, that you know, there, there could be an issue with if we got a new machine or something, and, and then... Um, that way they can get their CEUs too, but, um, and it's, they have to demonstrate back for us, which is kind of a big thing too, to have them demonstrate the skills so that you know they're doing them correctly. And coffee training, um, the unit managers do, after our coffee meeting, we pick a PIP project, the unit managers kind of take charge of their own rooms and residents and um, follow up on that, so that's really nice that, um, they're on top of that stuff right away, too, So, and they're all involved with coffee, which is a good thing. And then, like I said before, we really use our um, internal O-mail a lot to get information out, just to even just to tell them, you know, they're doing a good job or whatever, too. And when staff are hired, they're told how to access that and that they should go to that when they start their shift. And most of them do, because once in a while we'll put something on there that says, if you get this email, come to my office and you can get a candy bar or whatever. And there's usually a pretty good response when we do that. But, and that's about it. I guess mostly that we're just really proactive on it and we don't wait for something to be an issue. We try and catch it when it first starts and uh, either get them into therapy or in to see their doc or, or um, you know, exercise or ambulation programs are good. We We do all sorts of different things like that. Just to be proactive, I guess that's it. I'm done now. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sean, and help from your team I hear in the background. That's great. Uh, okay, so thank you. Again, I can see that your team is doing an impressive job of being – what I got most out of this, and I've heard this now 
three times since we've talked, and I'm always so impressed, uh, particularly in the um, really proactive and pro- approach that your team has, um, at the way you look at quality improvement, and obviously it really shows in your data. So this slide, it, again, um, I think it's the same slide Emily showed a bit before. This is an example of the slide of, of some data that goes out to all homes that are participating in the collaborative every quarter. It shows the composite scores, and this is actually West Wind's data. So you can see in the blue line, which is the bottom line, it shows, and lower is better with composite score. And you can see that not only do they have a very low composite score, and that red line is kind of the goal at, at six, and I just want to say that the reason that that was set as a goal, because at the time that CMS started looking at the composite score, 10% of the nursing homes in the nation were at six or less. Less, so they kind of made that the, like the gold standard of where you should be really be aiming. You can see that um, not only is Westwood Village below that, they keep even though they start low, they keep getting lower every time, which is extremely impressive because you know how it is if you have if you're doing super well in something, you reach kind of a you reach a point where it's hard to get, to get any better. But as this data suggests and shows. Uh, all this work that they're doing, it, it, they, they keep tightening their systems and they keep getting better. So um, and this really is quite, quite in, impressive. And I hope all of you are really looking, when you're looking at this data that you get from us, this composite score data, do pay attention to that trend line. If it, if it goes, if it's coming down, that's great. If you notice it spikes up or something, uh, see if you can figure out why to look at your different um, measures that make up that composite score, see if something happened that you can't try to uh, correct real quickly um, before um, it gets out of hand. As far as their other data, this is another example of data that you get. Uh, these are three of those 13 quality measures. Um, and this is, again, Westwind, Westwind Village data. Um, you're able to see all those components that make up the composite score, all the different quality measures. And this is, again, a really impressive example of three different clinical areas, uh, falls with major injury, pressure ulcers, and weight loss. And you can see how really um, how, how great their improvement has been, just, just a steady improvement, which would suggest, you know, that this isn't by chance, that because it's it continues to make improvements um, in the right direction, that they're uh, doing some um, systems changes around these different clinical areas, and, and it can really, really show. So kudos to the West Wind team. Um, we did include um, Sean's um, email information here. She did say it's okay that it, you can contact her if you'd like. Uh, after this presentation, if you have any specific questions, maybe you heard something that was really interesting, Sean would be uh, glad to talk with you and um, answer questions you might have um, so your home can be on the same kind of journey. So we, we really do appreciate that. Or go ahead and we're going to have time for questions later, so if you'd like to speak with Sean at that time, it would be great. Or if you want to put something in the chat box right now, feel free and we'll address that at the end of the presentation. Okay, so now we are going to turn it, turn it over to Kathleen Lavish, who um, leads this work in Michigan. And Kathleen, I think I'll go ahead and do, uh, handle your slides because I don't. Is that, is that okay? Yep, that'll be great, Christy. Thank okay. you. Just let me know when you want okay. me to. Okay. Okay. Next slide, please. One of the uh, really beneficial uh, or great benefits of participating uh, with Lake Superior QIN in this uh, National Nursing Home Quality Care Collaborative is the tremendous educational webinars that we offer on an ongoing basis. And many of them have free nursing CEs. So the webinar is free, the CEs are free, and it, you get uh, – you have access to some great national speakers. Here are some of the upcoming events. Uh, first of all, in February, we have Sue Ann Gilderman, who is very well known as a speaker on managing falls. In March, on March 21st, we have, excuse me, 
Dr. Joyce Black, again, a very well-known expert on pressure injury definition and stages. And in April, on April 19th, we have, again, a very well-known national speaker, Dr. Robert Fontag, on dementia care, identifying and managing target behaviors. Along with these uh, webinars, following each webinar, we also will be scheduling a sharing call. And this is where we invite uh, nursing homes, uh, many of whom are like West Wind, that have had great success in a particular area, to share their challenges, the barriers they had to overcome, and the success that they had in that particular area. But it's, it's open to all of our participating nursing homes, so it's great great way to share ideas, share best practices, and see how your fellow nursing homes are able to accomplish their goals. Next slide, please. Uh, in April, from April to August, we'll be offering this um, education to all our participating nursing homes. The Team Steps Long-Term Care Communication Module. We'll also be doing an educational webinar on antibiotic stewardship, which is a huge uh, part of the long-term care final rule, and on C. difficile prevention and management. So we will be sending out upcoming information about these webinars. Next slide, please. Here is the link to our Lake Superior QIN website, which has information about our upcoming webinars, gives you links to our recordings of past webinars, and also, again, has some fabulous tools and resources for nursing homes to utilize. Next slide, please. We are here to help, so please uh, take advantage of the free help that we offer you and join the National Nursing Home Quality Care Collaborative. You can go to this link and complete a participation agreement and submit the form to each of the states that you belong in. Again, it is free to join the collaborative. We are still recruiting, and this collaborative will run for through 2019, so you have a, a lot of opportunity to do some great quality improvement work for your home. Okay, well, we now have some time for questions and comments. And Adrian, can you please remind our participants how to get into the queue for questions or comments? Thank you. We will now begin the question and answer session. If you have a question, please press star then one on your touch tone phone. If you wish to be removed from the queue, please press the pound sign or the hash key. There will be a delay before the first question is announced. If you use a speaker phone, you may need to pick up the handset first before pressing the numbers. Once again, if you have an audio question, please press star and one on your touchtone phone. Uh, and this is Christy, and also feel free to put any questions that you might have in chat. And we do have one in chat, and this is for Sean at Westwind, uh, or the team at Westwind. So um, I just want to remind you, Sean, if you're going to speak to unmute your phone. So um, this is from Barbara Beardsley, and she asks, what is Westwind staffing level and your nursing hours per patient day? Do you happen to know that information off the top of your head? You might not. I do not know that off the top of my yeah. head. Do you have any idea, Jody, at all? No, not off the top of our head. Sorry. Okay. Thank you very much. Yep. And we have no audio questions at this time. Sean, this is Christy again. I know that uh, I'm trying to remember when we talked before because I'm just trying to think of what people might be wondering about. And it seems like um, you had mentioned, we talked a little bit about how how stable your staff is. Can you speak to that? Like your turnover? Do you have much turnover? <laughs> yes, we do. Not so much with like the nurse managers, though. No, the group that's here has been here for quite a while. Our um, Jody's been here forever. 
And but we've all been here quite a while. Um, but as far as CNA, we have turnover like everywhere else, and and nursing. But so no secrets there, I guess. Okay, thanks. As a reminder, if you have an audio question, please press star, then one on your touchdown phone. I see a question from Bobby. As Bobby Joe asking if the slides will be sent to participants so we may use the links to join. You can see in the chat the link to the slides. Um, but um, you know what? We could also, if you would write in chat what state you're from um, and your email address, I'm sure we should also reach out to you, Bobby Joe. And um, we'll, we could send you the information directly. Yeah. And okay. Also, on the next slide, there there are the contacts for each state, including their email address and phone Good. number. Good point. And Kathleen, I, I see um, she's from Michigan, so I'll make sure that you get her information. Thank you. And there, and there are some other people. Thank you for putting in your information. We will follow up with you. Operator, any other questions in queue? We have no audio questions at this time. But as a reminder, if you would like to ask a question, please press star, then one. We have no questions in the queue. All right, if there are no further questions, we will go ahead and conclude this educational session. Thank you again to all of our speakers uh, who joined us today. As you exit from this webinar, our window will open to a short evaluation, and we've also included a link to the evaluation in the chat box. Please take a minute to provide feedback on today's session. This session was recorded and will be available on the Lake Superior QIN website in about two weeks. Thank you all for participating and have a great afternoon. Thank you. And I want to remind everybody, because some are putting personal questions in at the end, that we will be responding to you by email, everyone that has asked questions in chat. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. This concludes today's conference. Thank you for participating. You may now disconnect.